Hello lovelies and welcome to the second day of Vlogmas. For today I have a couple of boxes that I thought I would unbox on camera for you guys. And you guessed it, it's books. So let's jump into the boxes. Well, we're not going to jump into them, but we're going to open them. You know what I mean. So here you have it. Those are the two packages. This one I've already opened just because I I am waiting for uh, a Christmas present from the same uh, store. So I just wanted to check that it, it was that or this this thing that I ordered for myself so that I don't unbox a Christmas present accidentally. But let's start with the one I've already opened. And it is the Norwegian translated edition of the Christmasaurus by Tom Fletcher. I read The Christmasaurus last December and absolutely fell in love with this story. And I want to read this to Noelle when she gets a little bit older. So when this one was on sale for, I don't know, $10 or something like that, I jumped on it, ordered it. So if you don't know about The Christmasaurus, it is written by Tom Fletcher, illustrated by Shane DeVries. I know, same last name. No. Um, relation whatsoever that I know of, uh, but it is a children's book story about a young boy in a wheelchair who all he wants for Christmas is a dinosaur. And then up at the North Pole, Santa finds a dinosaur egg that's been frozen for a long, long time. And then Santa uses uh, this dinosaur as a model for uh, his stuffed animal dinosaur that he's going to send to this young boy. And by accident, the real dinosaur ends up in his sleigh and at this young boy's house. And it's just really magical and so much fun. And I can't wait to read this to little Noelle when she's a little older. Now, the next package I have here is from Outland, which is one of my favorite stores here in Norway. They have, I don't know if it's three or four stores, uh, but I bought this online. So these were uh, books that I bought as a birthday present to myself, and they arrived today. And I don't remember exactly what I ordered. I remember a few of them, but not all of them. So, so this actually does feel like a birthday present. I should have brought some scissors or a knife over here, but I didn't. There we go. Paper. Paper. And then... This is a tiny thing that's going to be a Christmas present for someone else. I'm going to take that out. And here we have the books. So the first one is The Girl Who Saved Christmas. This is by Matt Haig. I absolutely love Matt Haig and his writing. I love The Humans. I read A Boy Called Christmas, which is the first one in the series. And this is the second book. So I'm super excited to finally continue on with the series. It says, what does it take to believe in magic? It's Christmas Eve and all is not well. Amelia Wishart is trapped in Mr. Creeper's workhouse and Christmas is in jeopardy. Magic is fading. If Christmas is to happen, Father Christmas knows he must find her. With the help of some elves, eight reindeer, the queen and a man called Charles Dickens, the search for Amelia and the secret of Christmas begins. Sounds super magical. I'm hoping that I can get to this this December. Next up, we have Secret Santa, the gift that keeps on giving, dot, dot, dot. So this year I've been really uh, intrigued and curious about Christmas horror stories. So I was on the lookout for that when this one popped up. And it says, all it wants for Christmas is you. Out of work for months, Lussie Meyer is desperate to work anywhere in publishing. Prestigious Blackwood Patterson isn't the perfect fit, but a bizarre set of circumstances leads to her hire and a firm mandate. L Lussie must find the next horror superstar to compete with Stephen King, Anne Rice, and Peter Straub. It's the 80s, after all, and horror is the hottest genre in the industry. But as soon as she arrives, Lussie finds herself the target of the mean-spirited pranks by her co-workers, who clearly don't want her there. The hazing reaches its peak during the company's annual Secret Santa gift exchange when Lussie receives a strange gift that she recognizes but doesn't understand. 
Suddenly, her co-workers begin falling victim to a series of horrific accidents, and Lussie suspects her gift is involved somehow. With the help of her former author, Fabian Nightingale, Lussie must track down her anonymous secret Santa and figure out the true meaning of the mysterious object in her possession before it destroys the company and possesses her. This sounds absolutely amazing. I'm super, super excited to get to this and to explore some Christmas horror. It's quite short, so hopefully I'll also get to this one this December. Next up, we have Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. I think the reason why I got this was that it was blurbed by Stephen King. Yeah, here it says, scare the living hell out of me and I'm pretty hard to scare by Stephen King. So that just, that is the ultimate praise uh, for me. So if Stephen King praises a book, then, then I'm intrigued. On the back it says, when it happens, it happens quickly. New England is locked down, a strict curfew, the only way to stem the wildfire spread of a rabies-like virus. The hospitals cannot cope with the infected, as the pathogen's ferociously quick incubation period overwhelms the state. The veneer of civilization is breaking down as people live in fear of everyone around them. Staying inside is the only way to keep safe. But pediatrician Ramola Sherman can't stay safe. When her friend Natalie calls, her husband is dead, she's eight months pregnant, and she's been bitten. Ramola is thrust into a desperate race to bring Natalie and her unborn child to a hospital to try and save both their lives. Their once familiar home has become a violent and strange place, twisted into a barely recognizable landscape. What should have been a simple, joyous journey becomes a brutal trial. So this is a uh, story about a pandemic and I'm equally terrified as I am intrigued by it. Not sure if I'm gonna wait or if I want to read this immediately. I have conflicted feelings when it comes to reading stories about pandemics and viruses at the moment. So yeah, um, excited to get to it. Not sure if I'm gonna do it now or later. We'll see. Next up, oh, this is heavy for being such a small book, uh, but it is Letters from Father Christmas by J.R.R. Tolkien. So what I know about this is that Tolkien used to write letters to his kids from Santa every year, and this is a collection of those letters. Oh, it also has pictures of the actual letters and stuff. I've seen this in a really beautiful hardback edition, but it was so expensive, whilst this one was quite uh, inexpensive. So I've been wanting this for years, but haven't gotten around to buying it. But this year I ended up giving it as a birthday present to me. And I'm very excited. This one is also one that I would love to get to during the Christmas time. Oh, another Christmas horror, and the price tag is right over the title. Why do they do that? There we go. At least it was one of those that's easy to peel off. But it is Hark! The Herald Angels Scream, edited by Christopher Golden, Bloomhouse Books Original, including stories by Joe R. Lansdale, Scott Smith, Michael Carita, Sarah Pinborough, Seanan McGuire, Jonathan Mayberry, Kelly Armstrong, and Josh Mallerman. Oh, Josh Mallerman, that's um, the guy that wrote Bird Box. That's interesting. Uh, so this is a collection of short stories, as uh, says the most wonderful celebration of Christmas horror ever assembled. From chained ghosts to blood-soaked Santas, the tradition of Christmas horror stretches from Dickens A Christmas Carol on up to the controversial Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Gremlins. Hark the Herald Angel Scream dives deep into the dark side of the season with tales of commercialism and desire run amok, of hauntings and ghostly revenge and of pure terror. Christmas, not Halloween, is horror's most fertile realm, as seen in the 18 original harrowing and chilling stories collected here. This just sounds amazing. My December TBR just keeps on growing to uh, a very unrealistic size, um, so hopefully I will get to this one in December as well, but we will see. And the last book that I have is surprisingly huge. I did not know that it was going to be this 
big. It is A Clock of Stars, The Shadow Moth by Francesca Gibbons, and it is illustrated by Chris Riddell. It says, Imogen should be nice to her little sister, Marie. She should be nice to her mom's boyfriend, too. And she certainly shouldn't follow a strange silver moth through a door in a tree. But then who does what they're told? Soon Imogen and Marie find themselves trapped in a magical kingdom where no one behaves as they should, and the sisters must move fast to escape the monsters that come out after dark. Longing to return home, they find help from a spoiled prince, a dancing bear, and even the stars above. It sounds like the um, perfect middle grade fantasy fiction that I'm going to love, and I'm excited to get to this. I'm not going to be so ambitious that I'm going to say that I'm going to get to this in December because I don't think that's realistic. I don't even think the, the books that I've mentioned so far that I want to get to in December is realistic at this point, but I'm hoping to get to this one pretty soon. So there you have it. Those are the books that I got in the mail today. The books that I've gifted for myself and for little Noelle as well. Uh, and I can't wait to get to all of these. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these and if you have any thoughts and opinions. I would also really like to know if you've ever read any Christmas horror stories, uh, except for typically A Christmas Carol, um, but kind of the newer Christmas horrors, because I've never really dived into that before, but I'm super excited to do it this year. So yes, Margaret Vlogmas, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button and that bell button if you haven't already. And I will see you again tomorrow. Goodbye.